October is National ADHD Awareness Month. It's an opportunity to debunk myths about the condition, especially as more people are being diagnosed. Joining us live this morning is mental health expert Dr. Kojo Sarfo. Good morning. Welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Irene. Fantastic. Okay, so you see both sides of this. I mean, you treat people with ADHD, but you yourself also have ADHD. Can you start off by telling us about your personal journey with it? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, for me, I've had ADHD. It's something that you, you, you're you born with, and it's something that's affected me my whole life. And I kind of had an idea that I had this condition because I would see kids who would also struggle with things like sitting still, and they would interrupt class. And they will go to the nurse's uh, you know, station, they go to the nurse's office, and then in between classes, they go get their medications. And because of you know, my background, I'm from Ghana, West Africa originally, we don't know a lot about mental health, or we don't necessarily believe in mental health all the time. So my parents, when I confronted them and told them that I was struggling with these things, they said the typical immigrant things. They'd say, oh, we'll pray for you. Uh, none of my kids have any type of mental health conditions. And it wasn't until I you know, grew up and became an adult uh, and I was 26 in the middle of my doctorate program when I finally got diagnosed with ADHD and then I was treated for it. Yeah, you really got some good perspective, some personal perspective on right. it to help other people. So how has our understanding about ADHD evolved and what are some things that many people get wrong about the conditions, you know, the misconceptions out there? So one of the biggest things that we learned about ADHD is that it affects more than just your life. It affects the lives of the people around you. If you have ADHD and you're not able to understand what's going on, then you'll struggle in relationships. There's a good chance that you could struggle at work. And for people with ADHD, I always tell my patients, and I tell people online that it's the most treatable mental health condition. So to not catch it and treat it is truly a tragedy. And one of the biggest misconceptions about it is that, you know, you can grow out of it, uh, which is not the case. Kids just learn how to cope with it and adapt over time. And also another thing about ADHD is people don't realize what can happen if you don't treat it. That's one of the biggest things that we've learned. A lot of kids who are um, living with ADHD and it's not treated, whether it's undiagnosed or whether they're diagnosed and they're not getting proper treatment, there's a higher chance for things like substance use, uh, unplanned pregnancies if you have teenagers all the time, financial problems as an adult. So the sooner you can catch it, the better you uh, give yourself um, a chance to you know, do better in life. And let's also talk about how people manage this on a day-to-day -day basis. Why do people with ADHD struggle to do what other people might consider easy, such as following routines, maybe organization, maybe completing seemingly simple tasks? So there are so many reasons why, but with ADHD, there's actually studies that show that there's a delay from one task to the next. So if I have three things to do today on my to-do list, me as somebody with ADHD compared to a near typical person, it's gonna take me longer to complete that task and also move on to the next thing. And on top of that, the anxiety that you have around, you know, a certain event that you may have later in the day, it might prevent you from getting things done at the beginning of the day. And time blindness is another thing that we see with ADHD where you have a diff difficult time understanding the concept of time. So you'll be moving throughout the day and you'll be trying to get things done, but then you don't realize that you're behind and with people uh, who have ADHD, uh, it's so complicated because you have to understand that you can't get things done as, as fast as your other peers. And then there's a loss of potential sometimes. You realize that you may not be able to you know, fulfill your potential unless you get some additional help. So I think it's very important that we talk about it. And Dr. Sarfo, you use social media a lot to inform people out there about the condition. And you recently posted about masking on your Instagram page. Right. What exactly is that? And what is the impact on someone with ADHD? So the, the impact is, is immense. And it, masking is something that neuro, neurodivergent people, people who have ADHD, people who are autistic, this is something that they do to accommodate with the society that we have today. So if you have ADHD, or even autism for that matter, it's gonna be difficult for you to fit in socially with people. You're gonna realize that you're different. And over time, you know, you're, we're really smart. We understand that if we adjust our personalities, we adjust who we are, we adjust our very being to fit in with society, is gonna allow us to cope and get through life. But when you mask for so long, in my opinion, it delays uh, accurate diagnosis. And if you don't get the right diagnosis, you can't get the right treatment in time. 
So we see people with ADHD, especially women with ADHD, some have to wait until their mid thirties and forties to get diagnosed. And this is often when they had kids who could get diagnosed with ADHD. And then once the kids being assessed and they're going through all the, you know, the signs of symptoms, they realize that they've had this issue their whole life and that they've had to accommodate to society just so that they can survive. So I think when you understand that you have this condition, it's important to not judge yourself for all the masking that you've done, but the sooner you can get the appropriate help, the better, because that way you can start to learn yourself, learn yourself and also to love yourself as well. There's also another big problem happening as well. Right now there is an ADHD medication shortage. What are some ways that people right. can manage ADHD without that medication? That's a fantastic question. So there's a shortage right now and because of social media and all these different pe uh, ways that we can get information, people are realizing that they have ADHD. So in my opinion, I think that the shortage is caused by that in a way. But one of the best things that you can do for your ADHD is to exercise and also to educate yourself about the different things that you can do. So exercise is extremely helpful. Modifying your diet, eliminate some of those processed foods and the synthetic dyes that can help you out a lot. And also just finding different ways and tips and strategies to help yourself get things done. So one common example I give uh, for kids is if you're trying to get uh, assignment done and you have ADHD, but you don't have access to your medication, instead of sitting down to do your work without having all of your materials, it's best to get every single thing that you need, pencils, paper, sharpener, your laptop, your iPad, your iPhone, because when you sit down, you can finally focus on that task and complete it as opposed to starting it without all of your materials. Because if you start and then you go get like a pencil sharpener, something that you, you forgot to get when you started, then it may take you forever to get back to that assignment. And then you won't get it done in time and it can affect your self-esteem. So some of these tips and tricks and strategies that we have are very useful, especially in a time like now where there's a shortage. Okay, Dr. Kojo Sarfo, thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate having you on. Likewise, Irene, have a fantastic day. You too.